Yu is a horribly disgusting and sweaty 15-year-old loser who likes to cheat his way out of everything in life. Due to his cringy ass, his father went out for a smoke break and decided to never come back. Fortunately for him, besides abandonment, he also suffers from good looks and crazy riz and girls think he's hot shit. But in reality, he's just a stupid cheater who has the supernatural power of switching bodies. In this world, when some kids become teenagers, they gain supernatural abilities that last throughout their teenage years and go away as they become adults. Since childhood, Yu likes to think that he's cool and above everyone else. When he becomes a teenager, he gains the supernatural ability of possessing other people. However, there are some limitations. For example, he can only possess them for five seconds, and while he's doing that, his own body will just fall down and it will look as if he's asleep. After five seconds, his soul forcefully comes back to his own body. Over the years, he learns to use this ability in many ways, including getting the answer to one of the most important questions a man can have. How does it feel to be a woman and have massive plots? He also uses this ability to take revenge on people he doesn't like by possessing their bodies and getting into a fight, but most of all, this ability allows him to cheat off of others in his class, and he uses the hell out of his ability to get and maintain the highest score in whatever grade he is in. Using this cheat, he manages to get admission in a private high school for elites and even aces the entrance exam. On the day of their opening ceremony, he walks up to the stage to give the speech as the new student's representative, and all the girls in his grade think that he's hot, smart, and charming, so he often gets asked out and takes pleasure in turning them down and feeling like a chica chad. At first, it may seem like he's just not interested, but in reality, he has his eyes set upon the prettiest girl in the school, Yumi. One day, he decides to follow Yumi and her best friend, Mishima, on their way back home. As they stop by the street crossing and talk to each other, Yu possesses Mishima and runs as far away from Yumi as he can in five seconds in her body. After that, he possesses an incoming truck con driver and makes him crash the vehicle into Yumi, but just before she can get Ishikaid and be reincarnated as a vending machine, he comes back to his body and acts like a hero by pushing her away and saving her life. Soon, Mishima walks back as well and asks them if they were Elk and Yu checks on the driver to make sure that no truck cons were harmed in the making of this video. Yumi thanks him for saving her life and says that they were going to this famous pancake place and offers him to come along. Yu uses reverse psychology and tries to act polite and shy and this makes Mishima go back home in hopes of letting her best friend spend some alone time with Yu. Later that afternoon, Yu and Yumi end up at the pancake shop and enjoy their meals together. Yumi asks him if he would like to go out with her after school sometime again and he accepts the offer with those smiling narcissistic eyes of his. The next day at school, he gets a message from Yumi that she would be waiting for him outside, but just then, he gets called to the student council office by the president. Once there, the president introduces himself as Yoshiyuki, and says that the higher-ups have asked him to make Yu take the entrance exam once again as he is under the suspicion of cheating. If he refuses to take the test or gets less than a 90% score, he will be expelled from the school. Hearing this, Yu says that it's BS, but with no other option, he decides to give it a go and cheat off the answer sheet in the president's hands. The test begins and being the dummy he is, he doesn't know any of the answers so he uses his ability and takes over Yashuki's body. But to his surprise, instead of the answer sheet, he is holding a hot magazine and he ends up ripping it into pieces with anger. Once he's back in his body, the president wonders what just happened and he tells him that to him it looked like he suddenly ripped the answer sheet into pieces. Just then, a pale blonde haired girl spooks the living daylights out of him by popping up from behind him with her camcorder. She introduces herself as the student council president of another school called the Star Ocean Academy now and says that she finally caught him lying. She shows him footage of his body going to sleep and says that just now he said he saw Yoshiyuki rip the answer sheet into pieces, but in reality his head was down on the table. Besides that, she has recorded a number of other footage as well of him doing this in the past during exams. Yu fights back by saying that he has this illness where he falls asleep suddenly and he can't do anything about it, but she shows him his medical report from the entrance exam and says that there is no mention of such a condition in there. Yu starts panicking and runs away from there and runs past a guy with glasses who seems to be with Nao. Yu runs out of the school and into the street until he makes a turn. Suddenly, something crashes into the shop behind him and he looks back in horror wondering what just happened. He starts running forward and something crashes into the garbage dump beside him and starts panicking even more. He eventually makes it to the river bank and takes a breather but turns around to see the four eyes standing on the other end of the road looking at him. The guy takes up a running stance and instantly zooms into the air with you in his arms and skips over the river like a pebble until they crash on the other side of the bank. You ask him what he just did and the guy explains that he has this supernatural power called charge, which lets him dash super fast in one direction, but he can't control it very well and his braking technique is still under work. You wonders what kind of defective technique that is and asks why he was chasing him. 
Just then, Neo arrives on the scene and says that they want him to transfer to their academy for at least as long as he is a teenager. She tells him that there are many people in this world like him with supernatural abilities, but these powers are a disease and they will vanish once he grows up. At their academy, they look after people like him to make sure they don't abuse these abilities and cause chaos in the world. So until his powers go away, he is to stay at their academy and she has already got the approval of his guardian. She wonders why he tried to cheat with his abilities even though he's quite good looking and taunts him a bit. He becomes mad and tries to hit her but she suddenly turns invisible and beats him up like a punching bag. He asks if her ability is invisibility but the four-eyed guy Jirjiro explains that her ability makes her invisible to only one person of her choice while she looks normal to everyone else. Before letting him go, she also tells him that he will be joining them at the student council because his ability can be useful in catching other people with supernatural powers like him. Later that night, Yu walks back home and is greeted by his younger sister, Ayumi. She tells him that she has good news and that their uncle told her that they both got scholarships from the Star Ocean Academy and they will be transferring there soon. To celebrate this occasion, she makes some omelette rice for the both of them with pizza sauce and ketchup and Ayumi says that she really misses how their mom used to make it. Yu looks down sadly and tells her to not talk about her saying how he's still mad at her for dumping them over their uncle after getting divorced. Ayumi says that she still wished that they would get along and while talking on the subject of family, she says that she's been getting this feeling lately that they used to have someone else in their family as well but Yu says that it is only the two of them, him and her and tells her to stop mixing dreams with reality. After that, Ayumi finishes her night by watching some stars with her telescope and Yu tells her to watch some late night show or something as it is a tried and true way of making friends. Take notes y'all in the comments section. Take notes. The next morning, they move to their new room inside the academy and Ayumi feels really happy and excited to have a big room to live in. Later that afternoon, Yu goes out with Yumi and tells her about the transfer and tries to make her understand that he still wants to go out with her without admitting it. But Yumi says that she understands and respectfully dumps him and this puts him in a big shock. Later that evening, Nao and Jojiro walk in their new room to help them settle in. They tease Yu and introduce themselves to his little sister and start helping them unpack their stuff. Nao shows Ayumi some tricks using her powers and becomes really good friends with her. Once they all leave, Yu and Ayumi have their dinner and Yu has a nostalgic dream where he feels like he once had a sibling beside Ayumi as well and he wonders if he was just influenced by her. The following day, Yu prepares for his first day at this new school and before he goes out, Ayumi packs in a lunchbox of his not-so-favorite omelette rice with pizza sauce. It once used to be his favorite, but he has grown out of it since long ago. At school, he is greeted by Nao and Jojiro and he asks them if everyone at the school has supernatural powers. Jojiro replies that most of the students are expected to develop them soon or have just started showing signs of it. Nao says that some time ago, if someone with supernatural powers was found, they would capture them and send them to the labs to conduct horrible experiments on them, but then a certain person set up this system to protect these children. Yu tries to play it easy by saying that it couldn't have been so bad, but now says that the older brother was one of the kids who couldn't make it and was experimented on. Yu asks her why they are making him use his powers outside of the school as a member of the student council and now explains that their job is to find such kids and to secure them or to warn them enough to not use their powers outside the facility for their own safety. He will be paid for this work and from the looks of how he has a younger sister, he can use quite a few of those paper bills for sure. Yu accepts the offer and then goes to his new class and introduces himself to everyone. He thinks that he will be able to act cool here too, but then he notices Nao and Jojiro both being in his class and it ruins his plans of putting up that hot stuff act. During lunchtime, Yu asks Jojiro about how Nao became the student council president in her first year of school. He says that the position is open to all students and it is mostly given to those who are fast to take an action with responsibility by using their abilities. After that, they both go to the cafeteria to buy some sandwiches because Yu is fed up with eating sweet omelette rice. The whole place is really crowded so Jojiro decides to use his ability and zooms past the food counter, throws the money in, grabs four cutlet sandwiches and smashes through the window on the other side. He then walks in from behind Yu, hands him the sandwiches and reveals that he always wears light armor under his uniform to prevent himself from getting seriously injured. After that, they both walk back to their class and eat together. Yu asks him about now and why she seems lonely. He says that her power only lets her be invisible to one person. And that means if she fights back using her powers to everyone else it appears as if she's just beating other people with no defense and this gives her a bad image among the students. Soon, Nao walks up to them and says that their collaborator is coming and they might have a new mission at hand. They all go to the student council office and Yu notices a huge map of the city on the table in the middle. Suddenly, a guy with dripping wet long hair walks in and places his finger on the map. 
He says that the place is Namba High School and his power is psychic photography, and then he leaves without saying a word more. You ask the others what that was all about and they explain that it was their collaborator and he helps them by locating other people with supernatural powers and identifies their abilities as well. With that, they all skip their class and go to Namba High School. Now and Jirajiro walk in and begin investigating by asking students about anything weird happening that they might have noticed recently. After some time, Nao runs back to Yu and tells him that they found someone suspicious and asks him to possess their body to search their bag. They both run and see the guy running with his bag. Yu uses his power and takes control of him and starts emptying his bag on the ground. Once his power runs out, Jirajiro tackles the guy and holds him down while Mayo searches the contents and finds a black letter with some pictures. It turns out to be a picture of one of the girls from the guy's school and the second picture shows a sort of x-ray version of it where he can see under her clothes as well. They ask him about it and he says that he bought the pictures and after getting threatened, he reveals that he got them from a boy named Yuno from Class 2E. After getting this tip, they run to the class and find out that Yudo is actually the president of the archery club at the school. Nao breaks into his locker and finds a ton of perverted evidence. After that, they go to meet him alone and Nao surprises him by showing up in front of him out of thin air. She tells him about everything and asks why he did it, and he says that he needed money to treat an illness in the family. Nao tells him that it's not the right way and if he doesn't stop, he will soon be captured and sent to the laboratories to be experimented on like an alien from Area 51. Yudo takes a hot picture of her as well and tries to blackmail her but Yu takes over his body and gives the picture back to Nao. Yudo then points an arrow at her and shoots her down as a last resort but Jojiro dashes through like Flash and takes the arrow away with him. After that, they make him surrender and the matter is taken care of. With that done, they all go back to their school and on their way, Yu asks Nao about her brother and what happened to him after he was taken to the scientists. She says that it's not really a secret and they can go see his brother together tomorrow. The next day, they both take the express train followed by a bus to a large hospital on top of a beautiful cliff with a fresh and scenic view. On her way, Nao tells the story of when it all began for her. She had just gotten a scholarship to get into a prestigious middle school. Like most anime dads, her father never returned from his milk shopping and she was raised by her mother alongside her elder brother, Kazuki. Kazuki was an aspiring guitarist who was struggling with getting his band land a deal with one of the major record labels. One day, their mother called them both out and said that she has enrolled them into a boarding school. Kazuki fights back and asks why she is doing that and that he is going to move out soon anyways, so that would be helpful to the family. Besides that, he is good for nothing who likes to play guitar. Unlike now, he's not even smart or good at studying. But their mother gets on her knees and bows down on the ground and silently begs them to do as she says, feeling heartbroken and conflicted. Kazuki still respects his mother and goes along with her wish. Nao further reveals that this new school was pretty fine, but even though she went to the same school, she would not be able to see her brother for ages. Whenever she brought up the topic or tried to go meet him, her friends would surround her and take her away. The only thing special about this school was that after their classes, she would have to go through a medical examination on a regular basis. It turns out her brother was diagnosed to have a supernatural ability, which lets him vibrate air at different frequencies. While she was studying at the school, her brother was going through brutal inhumane experiments, and when she finally got to see him after years, he was mentally broken and couldn't even remember who he was or who she was. The friends that would surround her turned out to be fake students, sent by the scientists to keep her away, and she was being kept there with the assumption that there is a great likelihood that she would develop powers as well like her brother. After witnessing all of this, she lost the ability to trust anyone and she ran away from there. Soon, they arrive at the hospital and go to meet her brother and Yu sees how he is mentally degraded and unstable. He thinks he is making music by crying out loud and ripping apart his sheets and pillows. After getting his sleeping med, he goes numb and now takes him out on a wheelchair to get some fresh air. She says that she had lost hope, but this was until she met the only person that she trusts now, and he created this school and let her in as well as supported her brother by paying for his medical care at this hospital for free. She says that there is no one looking for a cure for her brother because for scientists, people with superpowers are like batteries and once one runs out, they just get a new one to do their experiments on. After that, they call it a day and Yu returns to his room. He is greeted by Ayumi, and she makes vegetable curry for them to enjoy for dinner. Later that night, she tells him about being excited to see a special comet that passes by Earth once every few hundred years. The next morning, he wakes up and goes to school, and Ayumi packs him another lunchbox of her sweet omelette rice. He tells her that she doesn't have to make it for him anymore as no one brings lunch anymore and going to the cafeteria is a good way of making new friends. She looks down a little bit, but then tells him to take it anyway today, 
as she has already made it. Later that day at school during lunchtime, he goes to the cafeteria with Jojiro and he gets them both special curry rice using his crazy dashing ability. Now message Jojiro to get their asses in the student council office as their collaborator has a new lead for them. They both go to the office and as usual, the drippy haired guy walks in points at a random street on the map and says that this time the person has two powers, channeling and pyrokinesis, the ability to speak with the dead, as well as the ability to control fire. This makes them curious, and they go to the narrow alley to find this dual-powered person. Now this an investigation and runs into a woman who tells them that she saw an older man chasing after the TV idol and singer Yusa. Hearing her name, you realizes that it is the name of the singer that Ayumi is crazy about and Jojiro starts fanboying like a simp as well. It turns out, he is a hardcore simp for Yusurin and follows her on all her socials including her illegal-only fans. He tries to big brain it and suggests that they try calling her label and ask them to set up a meeting, but now tells him that he's not that hot that the world revolves around him, and that there is no way the label would let a bunch of high schoolers meet with their idol. She continues to look around and spots a suspicious man turning around the corner and chases after him. As expected, the man bodies her hard and throws her on the ground and starts running away. Yu takes control of his body and lets Jojiro tackle him into the wall, breaking some of his ribs. Nao gets on top of him and says that if he wants them to call an ambulance for him, he must tell her where Yusa is and why he was running away from them. He says that he was just following orders to catch her on behalf of Taiyu TV. With that, they send him off in the ambulance and are approached by a red-haired boy. The guy asks them what they were doing there and Nao tells him that they are looking for Yusa as they think she is under trouble and they want to protect her. He then asks them how they managed to take down the big guy and now says that they have supernatural powers too just like Yusa and makes the guy surprised. He asks her how she knew that and tells her to prove it and Nao goes invisible in front of him to prove her point. He then takes them all to an underground room where they meet up with Yusa and another guy. Jojiro instantly starts simping for her like Sanji but now kicks her away and starts asking questions from her. Yusa tells her that she has this medical condition where she suddenly falls asleep and often wakes up somewhere else. Nao concludes that Yusa has the ability to channel dead spirits in her body and asks the boys about it. They tell her that Yusa had an older sister named Misa who died in an accident. Just then, Yusa's expressions change dramatically and she starts acting like a total gangster girl. She asks them why they were talking about her to strangers and sets the whole place on fire, but then she sees the marshmallows in front of her and calms down. Nao talks to her and finds out that Misa takes control of Yusa's body using her power, and this way she can use her own power of controlling flames as well. Mystery solved. She asks her who the two guys were and Misa tells her that they were her childhood friends, and then she asks her about why Yusa was being chased and the guys tell her that it was due to this smartphone. It turns out Yusa accidentally took it home after a day at the set, and it contains some messages from some big shot TV producer about fraud and money laundering, which can easily get him arrested if taken to the police. But regardless of if she returns it now or not, she won't be able to make it in the industry due to its corrupt network of criminals. Misa says that she would just burn the whole TV station down if they do it to her sister, but now starts arguing with her and tells her to calm down unless she wants to get her sister into prison. She says that she has a plan to keep her sister safe, as well as to get some revenge and tells the guys to secure some fireproof clothing. Later that night, they call the producer and make use of return the device to him. But when the producer starts acting like some hot shit, Misa takes over and burns down two of his men on the side. She then makes one of the bodyguards stab himself in the leg and makes the last one of them vanish in a flash. After that, she walks forward and stretches her hand up and makes the producer feel some punches and kicks and makes him fall back on the ground. She threatens him and throws the phone his way and tells him to stay out of her way to start him or else she would come and find him in hell, making him run away like a sissy. It turns out, she had her childhood friends replace the bodyguards while wearing fireproof jackets so she could set them on fire. Yu took control of the third guard and made him stab his leg and Jojiro tackled the last guard into Twisted Tree Line. Finally, Nao beat the shit out of the producer to make it look like Misa had godly powers. Once this matter is resolved, she tells her that transferring to their academy would be the best way to protect Yusa, and that once her powers go away, she won't be able to take over her body anymore. Misa is totally fine with that, but the red-haired guy sure isn't. He asks to have some final words with her alone and confesses his feelings to her. He feels guilty for surviving from the motorbike accident that took her life and wanted to go out with her, but she decided to get Ishikade on her own. Misa pats him and tells him to move on and get his life straight and decides to transfer to the Star Ocean Academy later on. Once all this is taken care of, Yu walks back home and is greeted by a Yumi, as usual, who is waiting for him to have dinner. They sit down and Yu tells her about meeting Yusa and she starts fangirling like a minion. He tells her that she might be transferring to their school and Ayumi becomes even more excited to meet her in person. 
The next morning, he wakes up to Ayumi making breakfast for him. Today on the menu is French toast covered in Ayumi's special, yes, you guessed it, pizza sauce. After shoving all the super sweet toast down his throat, Yu rushes to the school and meets up with Jojiro. Everyone in the class is abuzz about Yusur and transferring into their school and Yu wonders what will happen once she really comes in. Soon, the class begins and the teacher walks in to introduce their new and popular transfer student. Everyone starts cheering for Yusa, and it becomes a dance party before they all get scolded by the teacher. Yusa acts cute as usual and tells them all to quiet down and then says that she would often be on break for work reasons but would love to enjoy her high school life with them. Her seat is set to be the one beside Nao and everyone starts flocking around her like sheep. Later that day, Nao walks in and says that they got another lead and tells Yusa to come with them as well. They all go to the student council office and as usual, the wet dripping man guy walks in and makes a water drop fall on the map. This time their target has the power of telekinesis and Yusa asks them what this was all about. He fills her in and Nao says that she thinks she knows who their target is based on the location. She then shows them all some footage of a guy named Arafumi from Kenai Academy's baseball team. He seems to be quite popular among the young players and is said to be on his way to joining the big leagues with his recent performance in the last three games. From his slowed down footage, Nao finds out that he is using the wrong grip for the kind of ball he throws and suspects that he is using his powers to control the ball mid-air after it leaves his hands to make those insane throws. After that, they all go to Kenai Academy and introduce themselves to Arafumi. Nao directly tells him to stop using his supernatural powers during his games and that he will lose his powers by the time he makes it to the pro leagues and would be thrown out of the team and it will ruin his career forever. She tells him to play using his own ability and he says that she can't possibly think for him to believe all that BS. She tells him to stop acting and shows him her powers by going invisible in front of him and just then Misa takes over and shows him some fire as well. Who tries to keep her calm and she spits on the ground in anger and Jojiro instantly starts looking for it like the creepy simp he is. At the same time, he struggles with the fact that it's not actually Yusa, but Misa who spat and wonders about the pathetic details of it. Meanwhile, Nao tells him that if he doesn't stop, he will be caught by the authorities and will be sent to scientists who will conduct experiments on him until his powers run dry. He looks at her skeptical, but then she offers him to play a game of baseball against her school. If he wins, she will keep her nose out of his business, but if he loses, he must stop using his powers. He accepts the offer, and they decide to meet up at Star Ocean Academy baseball field at noon next Sunday. On their way back, you ask now if they have any ability users on their team who can hit Arafumi's telekinetic ball, and she says that they don't have any active ability users on the team at all. But to make things go their way, they will be joining the team themselves and making you use his powers to their advantage. Next Sunday, they all meet up in the field and both teams line up against each other. They begin the game, and at first they both seem pretty equal. Their batters can't hit Ocean Academy's pitches, while Arafumi's balls are just cheats and really hard to hit. Nao calls them out for being bad, and her own pitcher gets mad at her saying that he's trying his best as well. But whenever someone gets mad at her for her bad mouth, she calls Yusuf for help and makes her use her female reeds to turn the boys into simp and gets them back on the pitch. During their game, they notice that Arafumi aside, their catcher is also really skilled for being able to catch crazy balls without having any powers. The game goes on for quite some time and it reaches the final points. Nao decides to let their team use some of their powers as well to spice things up and tells you to possess their batter to score points. You manages to do that, but their catcher from earlier manages to get point back by securing a base. Now it's the last round and Jojiro is up for batting. Nao tells him to touch the ball down and then use his powers to touch the first base down. Jojiro does just that and only has to pay his ugly face being granted to Oblivion as a price. Next up, Misa and Nao manage to hit their balls as well and last up it's Yu's turn to hit the ball for the winning point. He asks Nao about how he's going to do it and she tells him to play fair for once in his life and calls him a cheer. With that, Yu walks up to bat and tries his best and manages to stall the point with a bunch of fouls, but in the end, Arafumi uses his powers to throw a wild ball and makes Yu miss. But his catcher also fails to get it as well, and this gives Miza a chance to run for the base and they win the game. After their whim, Yu feels happy and wonders why he felt that way and groups up with Nao. They then tell Arafumi to stop using his powers as promised and he says that he will do it. He then reveals that he is just an average pitcher but his friend, Takato, is an amazing catcher who can really make it to the big leagues. But being his friend, he decided to stay with him even though their school doesn't have the best of baseball programs. He wanted to make it to the big leagues and get his friend there. Nao uses Topmim Jutsu and tells him to cheer his friend from the sidelines and she's sure that one day, he'll be proud of him and will tell others that that amazing player is his friend. Once all of this gets taken care of, Arafumi promises to not use his powers again and walks back to his team. 
Nao tells Yu to possess Arafumi for a moment as she wants to conduct an experiment and he does it for her. As expected, he takes over his body for five seconds and then returns to his own and asks what she wanted to see and she says that they will have to wait and see. After that, Yu goes back home to eat dinner with his sister as usual and watches him fangirl over Yusa's new commercial and song announcement. A few mornings later, it is yet another day with everyone in their class flocking around Yusa like simping sheeps. On the other hand, Nao is minding her own business and listening to music as usual. Suddenly, a group of girls walk up to her and drag her out of the class and take her behind the school. Yu wonders what this was all about and decides to follow behind and spies on her from around the corner. He sees the girls ganging up on Nao and pushing her against the wall. They then beat her up and throw her on the ground before walking away. Yu walks out and asks her what that was all about and she tells him that people often don't like how she fights from the time she first encountered them and take revenge on her like this. Yu remembers the time when she beat him up by the riverbank and understands what she means but thinks that it's totally unfair for them to beat her like this. He asks her why she doesn't fight back and she says that she isn't in the mood to and notices that she got a message from their collaborator. She walks back to the student council office and calls everyone there. Yusa looks at Nao's beat-up face and Misa comes out and says that they should take revenge but Nao tells her that she doesn't want to and lets them go. Just then, the guy with the wettest drip walks in as usual and points towards some mountains on the map this time. This time their target has the power of flight and it looks like Nao knows about this person as well. She puts down a paper and shows that there have recently been sightings of people seeing a fly man in those mountains and their target must be this guy. So far, only the Nisha cult groups are talking about this but it won't be long before local news picks it up if these sightings continue. That means that they must act fast and she tells everyone to get ready for a trip. At the supermarket, Yu helps now with getting the food and she stocks up on a lot of corn. She says that they can't have barbecue without grilled corn and then heads to the meat aisle to get steaks, ribs, and sausages. Yu adds in some vegetables and peppers as well and they fight over being healthy while Jojiro and Yusa watch them and wonder how they look like a healthy couple. However, Jujiro soon starts sipping over the fact that he finally got to talk to Yusa alone. After getting all the stuff, they all head to the mountains and Nao tells the boys to carry the tents and other equipment while they will take care of the food. Yu asks if they will be staying overnight and she says that they will stay for as long as needed to lure the flight guy out. With that, they go to the location from the magazine and set camp there. While assembling their tent, Yu almost falls into a deep, dried-up well and Nao starts laughing at him. She then fills it up and says that it would have been fun seeing his fat fall down. After that, they spend the rest of their day cooking food, enjoying their meal, and talking to each other. At night, you wonders where Nao went and walks a little into the woods and ends up near a cliff with a beautiful view of the starry sky above. Nao is sitting there on a stone seat while listening to her music and Yu walks up and joins her. He says that he was wondering about the music that she is always listening to and she lends her MP4 device to him to have a listen in. She tells him that it is a post-rock band called Jeaned, and it used to be her brother's favorite band before he went insane. Yu gives it a listen and immediately feels deep yet freeing isolation from the music and compliments it. Seeing him enjoy the music, Nao becomes really excited and lets him keep the player as a gift. She says that the lead singer for the band is blind in both eyes and perhaps that's why her songs feel so deep and connecting. Looking at her act so excited and happy, you realizes how this is the first time he has seen this side of her and we all know where this is going, right fellas? She further adds that right now she spends her days recording cheaters like him, but it is her dream to one day record a video for Jeanne. After that, they both walk back to the camp and Nao says that they will keep watch in turns for four hours and the boys can sleep first. Yu and Jujira go to sleep and Yu has a nostalgic dream about him having another sibling beside Ayumi like the last time and he wonders what that was all about. The next morning, they spend their day catching some fish and cooking it over open fire. They also take separate baths and Yu notices how Jojiro has quite a built-up body. He says that his powers require him to always wear armor underneath his clothes and it's always a good thing to have a strong body to support it. Another day passes by with no signs of the flight guy and Yu says that he wants to go back as he has a younger sister to worry about back home. Mayo says that she can't allow it and tells him to stop worrying as she has a feeling that they will be able to end this trip tomorrow. The next day, while cooking their food, they are encountered by a young man in blue clothes. He asks them what they were doing there and now says that they are all runaway high schoolers who plan to live here. The guy doesn't buy it and says that he will call police to take them back home, but now says that then the police will take him as well. He asks why and she says because this is private property and looking at him, it's also suspicious why he's there alone. He tries to come up with an alibi, but now strikes it down immediately as a lie and says that he is the guy who has the ability of flight. 
She says that he must have chosen these private mountains to practice his ability to stay out of public sight, but when he saw them camped there with no plans of leaving, he must have become anxious. He tries to act cool and turns around saying that it's all nonsense but now steps on his tail by saying that she has him practicing his ability on camera. Hearing this, he becomes mad and jumps down to get the camera away from her, but instead ends up falling inside the dried up well from earlier that now and covered up with some grass. Once down, he is compelled to use his ability and jumps out of the deep hole and attacks now in order to snatch the camera away from her. Yu tells Yujiko to do something but he says that he can't with now so close to him, and once the guy gets his hands on the camcorder, he flies up and far into the sky. Yu uses his ability and takes over him but ends up touching heaven as he opens his eyes to get a grand skydiving view of the city. As he falls down to his seemingly unavoidable death, he tries hard to use the ability in the guy's body and manages to break his fall with flight. Five seconds later, he comes back to his body and the guy falls down with a few bruises. Now, when the others walk up to him and reveal their identities and explain that they are there to protect him and that one day his powers would vanish, and what would happen if he is in mid-air when that happens? Besides that, the scientists must be rubbing their hands with excitement to see how his body makes him fly and that she is sure he doesn't want to become a lab rat. The guy introduces himself as Sato and says that he thought he was the only one in this world with powers and had a dream about him being the chosen one and being called the great hero Sky High Sato. They all look at his delusional face and wonder why they let a weeb like him survive. With that, they all go back home and Yu comes back to a not very happy Ayume. Still, she understands like the best little sister she is and treats him to an amazing bowl of homemade vegetable noodles. Yu notices that there is no pizza sauce in it and thanks God for this and asks Ayumi about it. She says that she wanted to put it in as it's their family's secret ingredient, but they ran out of it, and for some reason the officer on the gate won't let her go out alone so she couldn't buy more. Yu internally thanks the officer for saving his life and uses some healthy talk no jutsu. A compliments addition to tell Ayumi that her cooking is better even without the pizza sauce. After that, she says that she has a lot of things to talk about with him since he was gone and reveals that a boy from her grade asked her out but she rejected him. Yu says that it could have been a turning point in her life and he's not against it as long as the guy is a good person. Suddenly, Ayumi has a sneeze and Yu checks her forehead for temperature and notices that she has some light fever. He gives her medicine and lets her cozy up in her bed and tells her to rest up for the night. The next morning, Ayumi is still feeling sick and has a fever. Yu tells her to stay in her bed and rest up and that he will tell her school that she won't be coming today. After that, he goes to his school and spends the day normally. During lunchtime, the drippiest guy with the wettest hands walks in points to their dorms on the map and says that the power this time is called Collapse. They all wonder what this power could be and Yu worries why it's not called Destruction after all Collapse suggests it to be some kind of destructive power to make structures collapse. Nao says that it's not uncommon for them to see people awaken powers in their school because that's the entire purpose of it but wonder why a student is in their dorms at this time. Yusa suggests that it could be someone sick who's sneezing right now and this makes you uncomfortable as he thinks about Ayumi. Nao picks up on his expression and asks him about it and he says that his sister is sick and in the dorm right now so he's worried about her. Nao says that it's very likely for siblings to develop powers if one of them awakens it and says that they should go and check. Yu says that it would be fine to go with Nao and taking Yusa might cheer Ayumi up as well. But Jojiro is too much of a bullhorn so taking him would be bad. He wonders if he should take over his body and jump down the building but Nao picks up on it as well and calls Jojiro towards herself. She tells him to look out the window and see if it's a big giraffe out there and when he goes to the window to see she kicks him hard and sends him flying out the window. She calls an ambulance for him while Yusurin looks in horror and wonders what just happened. After that, they all decide to go buy some rice porridge for Ayumi and Yu suggests that they all have dinner together that night. He notes that Yusa is always alone with her sister Gon and now is practically an orphan with a disabled brother in the hospital with trust issues. He feels sad for both of them and insists that they eat together at his dorm and go to shop together. After picking up some expensive groceries, the girls go to Yu's home alongside him and before entering Yu tells Yusa to hide her presence at the start because her sister would become super excited and would start bleeding from her nose if she saw her. Yusa being the dummy she is, wears a corona mask and a pair of sunglasses and calls herself Superman. They all go inside and notice that Ayumi's classmates are there to check upon her. Her best friend and class representative, Nomura, stands up and greets everyone and introduces herself. Next up, a brown-haired kid stands up and introduces himself as Oikawa and Nomura reveals that he is the guy whom Ayumi rejected, though he still hasn't given up on her and wants to be her friend. Besides them, there's another purple-haired girl called Kanashi as well. They all say goodbye to Ayumi and take their leave and now enters and greets Ayumi. 
They both sit down together and cheer up, but just then, Yusa pops her head in and Ayumi instantly recognizes her and starts bleeding like the simping Sanji she is. Nao helps control her nose bleeding a couple of times and then they all sit down and have a happy meal together. After they are done, Yusa takes her leave due to her work as an idol, and Nao offers to wash the dishes and makes you wipe them off with a cloth. Looking at them, Ayumi asks if they are dating and teases them, but they both deny it with the most expressionless face they can. After that, they give Ayumi her medicine and put her to sleep and she says that she doesn't want to go to sleep because she had a nightmare last night as well. Nao tries to ask her about the details of her dream but then stops and goes out with you. She tells him to try to ask her about it as it can indicate what kind of ability she has awakened. And while they haven't confirmed to 100% that it is her who they are after, she's a very likely candidate. After she leaves, Yu goes inside and asks Ayumi about it and she says that she dreamed of the ground and walls cracking up and the ground breaking up underneath her. The next day, Yu tells everyone about it and they suspect that it can be a really dangerous ability that can harm its user as well and so they should be careful and try to keep her in the dorms for as long as they can to avoid an incident from happening and harming other people. The next morning, Ayumi is all healed up and wants to go to school but Yu tells her to stay one more day at home to rest. She doesn't like that and says up, oh, but when he leaves, she dresses up and sneaks out of the dorms and goes to school anyways. Back at the high school, Yu and Jirjiro enjoy their lunch break as usual and suddenly get a call from now. She calls them to the office and tells them that Iyuma went to school. Yu becomes worried and they all rush to the middle school to see if she is fine. On the other hand, during lunchtime, Oikawa tries to invite Iyumi to eat together once again but Nomura comes to her escape and lets her walk away. Ayumi eventually runs into Kanashi and she says that she is really jealous of her as she wanted to go out with Oikawa, but then she transferred to their school and ever since he only thinks about her. She then takes out a paper cutter and extends its blade out and says that it's time for Ayumi to suffer. Ayumi tries to calm her down but when it doesn't work she starts running up to the roof. But unfortunately, the door to the rooftop is locked and she is back to a corner with Kanashi walking up the stairs with the blade. She starts panicking and her ability activates and the whole place around her starts collapsing and breaking apart. Kanashi falls back and is saved but Ayumi falls down with the whole place collapsing on top of her. On the outside, Yu and the others rush inside the school by climbing over the fence and try to make it in time. But then they see the far wing of the building collapsing and Yu rushes towards it only to find his sister squash under the debris. And then a piece of the rubble collapses on top of him as well. Kindly leave F in the comments section for the little nosebleeding Sanji of this anime. It's time for an episode on the seven stages of grief. After getting some treatment at the hospital, Yu opens his eyes and asks where his sister was. The doctors say that she couldn't make it and this puts him in a state of shock. He can't believe what just happened and goes on like this as they hold the funeral service for Ayumi. And later he walks back to his empty dorm room with no one to greet him with some pizza sauce infused curry rice. He starts crying and beats himself up wondering if he was ever able to show her just how much he cared for her and cries himself to sleep. The next day he wakes up on the floor with tired eyes and goes to check the fridge heat something. He eventually finds the carton of cup noodles that his uncle sent him when he first moved in and decides to eat them. Days pass by followed by weeks and almost a month comes to an end with him holed up in his room with his sheets around him. His floor littered with empty cups and his eyes growing lifeless by the day. Jojiro and Yusa come by many times with home-cooked meals and offer to eat together with him but he always refuses and makes no contact with anyone outside. Misa takes over and tries to break in as well but with the reinforced door between them and her understanding of losing his sister in some way, she decides against it and they leave him alone as well. Even more days pass by and they send in Yu's first crush from his old school, Yumi, to try to get him to come out but Yu doesn't even bat an eye towards her. Feeling heartbroken and dead inside, he only asks her to run an errand for him and get him more cup noodles as his old supply runs out but when she urges him to come with her, he refuses and becomes mad at her for acting as if she is his mom. Feeling scared and scolded, Yumi walks out as well and Yu is yet again left to rot away in his loneliness and depression. With his food supply running short, Yu eventually decides to go out to restock, but notices that there are two guards standing outside with the room master. He realizes that they are probably there to take him out by force, so he uses his power to take over one of them and beats the other down. After that, he walks out silently and goes to the bank to withdraw all the money in his account, which is almost equal to 3,100 USD in today's money for you American weebs. And yes, I accounted for inflation. He decides to go far away from their school where the drippy guy wouldn't be able to locate him and ends up living in a net cafe. He holds up there for a few days and fills himself up with pizza and anime but then he is bored and decides to take a walk out. He notices some sweet dangos being sold in a street shop and tries them out and then gets interested in some FPS games. 
He decides to try them out as well and ends up becoming as unhinged as a casual Valorant player. He starts enjoying the killing part of the game a bit too much and gets hooked to eating sweets and going to the arcade. One day, he loses his patience watching a couple of guys spending too much time on his favorite game machine. He calls them out and the guys take offense to it and take him out under a dark railway bridge. They decide to beat him up but Yu uses his powers and makes them all beat each other and finally ends the last one by poking dango sticks inside his leg. A few days later, he is confronted by a gang leader called Hosoe Yamada. He asks him if he is the guy who took down the other guy's gang alone and tries to assert his dominance over him, but Yu doesn't like shit talking up to him and he takes over all of his gang and beats them all down single-handedly and in the end, he even makes their boss piss his pants by threatening to poke his eyeball with a dango stick and asking if he would like a real gangster street name like One-Eyed Sissy. After that, he was on a gang butchering spree where he picks up fights randomly and enjoys defeating gangs upon gangs of people. One day, he finds one of the NPCs from a gang drop a little plastic bag with some copium crack. He thinks that it must be something fun and decides to smoke it, and that's when he gets kicked in his face by a familiar pale blonde-haired girl. Now reveals herself and tells him that she can't let him cross that limit and he asks her for how long she was there. She says that she has been there since day one revealing that she has been staying with him in his house since Ayumi got Ishikade and followed him everywhere including the net cafe, the game arcade, the gang fights and all. She says that she feels responsible for this as well and wonders if she should have protected Ayumi better and if she could have prevented it in some way. She then says that everything aside, she couldn't let him cross that line and if he wants to lose his humanity, hearing her. Yu comes back to his senses a little bit and asks her what he should do. She makes a call and then tells him that she would take him out to eat a healthy meal. He refuses to follow along and then she bets him that he has to take only one bite. After that, they would part ways and she wouldn't meddle in his business. Yu agrees and follows her to Jujuro's house. It is empty for the night as his family is out and they walk in. She tells him to go watch some TV until she's done cooking and then wakes him up to a plate of omelette rice. Yu takes a bite and realizes that it tastes the same with the secret ingredient and now tells him that she borrowed his mother's recipe notebook that she found in Ayumi's room and how she must have wanted to recreate it after his mother left as it was his favorite dish in childhood. Yu thinks back on the last omelette rice Ayumi cooked for him as a lunchbox and how he used to complain about it and starts crying. He realizes that it was the last omelette rice that his sweet little sister had ever cooked for him and eats the whole plate with tears in his eyes. Now follows it up with a tissue for him to put on his eyes and a cup of tea, and lets him rest. He asks her what he should do now and she says that he should start by coming back to the student council. He asks her if they had promised to leave each other after he took one bite and she says that he didn't take one bite. He licked the whole thing clean so he must have wanted to meddle with her business a lot. He starts smiling and thanks her and says that he will come back to the student council after all. The next day he dresses up and prepares to begin his new life with a fresh start. He says his goodbyes to Ayumi and goes to his school and is greeted by Yusa and the others. Everyone in his class feels jealous about him getting attention from their goddess and Yu is happy to see that this annoying cult of simps is still active in his class as usual. During lunchtime, he goes to the cafeteria with Jojiro and he treats him to the limited time beef curry just like how they used to do before Ayumi's passing. Yu notices how everyone's going out of their way to act nice to him and he feels really blessed for that. Soon they get a message from Nao to come to the office and they wonder if the dripper is back with another lead. They rush to the office and ask her what was up and it turns out that it was just Yusurin wanting to get all their reviews on her latest music video. Hearing this, the simp lord of Yusurin Sim Strajiro starts flying with happiness and they all sit down to see her music video. Once they are all done watching it, Yu tells Jujiro to give his review as a fan and he replies with a face that says that he has already passed on to heaven. On the other hand, Nao gives her a fair 8 out of 10 rating but deducts points for her cringy habit of acting like an idol at school as well. Once all this drama is over, Nao says that the real reason she brought them all there was to ask them to decide who was going to the concert with her. She takes out two tickets to the Jean concert that is meant to happen the next day and tells them to decide. By vote of elimination, Yusa doesn't know anything about post-rock music and isn't interested. Jojiro isn't into it either while Misa just likes heavy metal rock and turns down the offer when Nao says that there won't be any of that at the concert. Naturally, he was left to take the ticket, and with a final push from Nao, he accepts the offer. Later that day, on his way back home, he runs into a red-haired blind girl. When she passes by him saying how she doesn't like being avoided, Yu listens to her voice and remembers the feeling he had when he first listened to Jean's songs on Nao's MP4 player. He turns around to ask her if she was actually the blind singing lead of the famous band, but she walks up to him instead and asks if he can take her to a place that sells modanyaki. He wonders about it a bit and then eventually realizes that she is asking for a modern okonomiyaki dish that also contains yakisoba. 
He accepts her request and takes her to a local place to eat the dish and orders one for himself as well. During all of this, he fights back against his habit of calling home to tell Ayumi that he would be coming late or waiting to go home to eat dinner prepared by her. He misses her dearly and lets out a sad sigh and the girl catches on to it. She confirms his suspicion that she is in fact the lead singer named Sala Shane and asks if he had something really sad happen to him recently. She says that he can talk to her about it, and they both sit outside as Yu tells her about losing his sister. She says that there must be someone who changed him for him to come out of his depression, and he can only think about now. Just then, he remembers about her brother Kazuki and asks Sala for a favor. He tells her about him and asks if she can come with him to see the guy as he was a guitarist who idolized her and was about to get big break of his own as well before becoming like this. She kindly agrees and goes to the hospital him to see Kazuki. Before going, he calls now and tells her that he met Sala and if she wants to meet her as well but she says that she isn't interested as she likes her work but she isn't really excited about meeting stars. He then proposes the idea of her meeting her brother and asks her to tell the hospital about their arrival. Later that evening, they go to see Kazuki at the hospital and on their way she tells him how she suffered various heartbreaking hardships as well and at one point had to give up her eyesight to God to achieve this success. Later on, they go meet Kazuki and she sings for him and this restores some of his sanity and he manages to remember his sister, Nao, as well. After that, Yu travels back with Sala and on his way he calls Nao and tells her about the miracle that he witnessed and she says that she already knows as she heard about it from the nurse at the hospital and immediately rushed there but it looks like they barely missed each other at the entrance. She thanks him for going so far for her and her brother and tells him to be ready to meet at the concert the next day. Once back, Sala's manager comes to pick her up as well after giving her an earful, and she says that she would like to meet you sometime again. He says that he would be there at the concert, and she says that she will sing with him in her mind then and they part ways. The next day, he goes out to the concert with Nao and enjoys his day with her. They buy a bunch of Jean branded mobile accessories and eventually get to the concert. Sala sings her song and mid-concert, Yu starts feeling weird. He starts feeling nostalgic for some reason, and then Sala moves on to her new song and somehow Yu knows about it. It's as if he has heard the song before and suddenly a lot of memories start flooding in his head and he collapses on the ground. As he goes down, he has a dream about his memories from another life where he is at a scientific facility with a lot of children with powers just like him. There he wakes up listening to Jean's new song alongside Ayumi, who is listening to her favorite singer Yusa. They get up and go for lunch and Yu complains how everything is going to taste like medicine with all the power-enhancing chemicals they have put in their food. Ayumi says that regardless of that, she believes that curry can make everyone feel happy and wishes that their elder brother, Shunsu, could have eaten with them. Yu bends down and tells Ayumi that he has really strong powers and that's why he is under restraints and reveals that he has the ability of time leaping. During lunch, he sits on a table beside a long brown haired guy named Kumagami who turns out to be Shunsu's best friend. Shunsu calls him Pooh because the first part of his name means bear and that becomes his nickname as well. Yu thinks that he has a really powerful ability as well, and if the scientists found out about it, they would restrain and lock him up as well. His real power is called Plunder, which lets him take away the supernatural ability of anyone he possesses. With that power as the core of their plan, he joins up with a bunch of other kids including Pooh as they plan to free Shunsuk, so he can lead them to a better future once again. Pooh gives him a piece of paper with instructions to meet a guy with telepathy as his power, and to steal it from him. He also steals a pulverization quirk that lets him destroy things with a relatively controlled force. After having their lunch, Yu goes back to his room with Ayumi, but on their way back, the scientists take Ayumi away as it is her day for getting experimented on and she forgot to tell Yu about it. They lock him up and after some time in his cell, he hears loud noises and alarms go off and when the door unlocks, he finds one of the better scientists there who happens to know about his real power. He explains that they tried to forcefully bring out his sister's abilities and that caused a whole block to collapse. Now they plan to dissect her for studying and then dispose of her as needed. Hearing this, Yu starts running to find his brother and Su meets up with Shichino, who has the ability to walk through walls. He lets him steal his ability and tells him to go steal the telekinesis power and save his brother and after a last ditch effort. He manages to free his brother from his restraints and Shunsu time leaps as Yu is shot down by the guards of the facility. Just then Yu wakes up at the hospital and wonders about what he saw. He remembers how he and Ayumu always had this feeling that they had an elder brother and maybe all of this was true and just then, a brown-haired guy walks in and says that it looks like Yu's memories are back. He turns out to be Kumagami and the collaborator guy who always helps them find people with abilities. Yu asks him if all that was true and tells him to hold his questions for his brother as first of all they have to say to his sister. Yu becomes mad and asks how they will save someone who has already died and he says that he must know about his brother Shunsuk's ability now that he has his memories back. 
Hearing his name, Nao asks if it's the same Shunsuke that she knows in Kumigami confirms that he is. It turns out he is the guy who saved her and established the school that she once told you about. After that, he tells them to follow him and takes them to a secret high-tech underground facility in the woods. There Yu finally gets to meet his brother and realizes that he has gone blind and still feels skeptical about all of this. Shunsu greets Nao and praises her for all her efforts and then tells Yu to take his seat as he tells him about everything that happened after his time leap. His story begins as he opens his eyes three years before they were all caught by the scientists in his home with his young siblings. He goes on to meet Pu and gather all his friends as they try to do things right this time but at the end of the day they are just a bunch of kids and can't hope to win against equipped squads of grown men trying to capture them. With every false attempt where things went wrong, Shunsu devises a new plan and leaps back in time to do things better. This goes on for quite a few times and every time he notices that his eyesight is getting weaker and weaker. This goes on until the last time leap when Shunsu decides to gather a lot of money and to establish a safe zone for the kids with special powers and this time he succeeds in doing so but it also comes at the cost of him completely losing his eyesight. He asks his friends Madoki and Manomari to erase Yu and Yumi's memories of him so he can move more freely and they could be safe as well. Now he has called Yu there to meet up with him so he can steal his powers using his ability to go back in time to the day when Ayumi was sick and save her. He then asks him to go meet him in the new timeline and to explain everything so he can take actions accordingly. Yu asks now if she knew about it all along and she says that she did thanks to how Kuma's ability works and when she went to find him. It turned out that he was mistaken about his powers and they decided to keep it a secret because they were actually afraid of what he would become if he kept racking and stacking abilities like that. With that, Yu stands up and takes Shunsuke's powers and wakes up beside a Yuma on the night of when she became sick. The next day, he goes to school as usual and their drippy Kuma comes and tells him about someone in their dorm rooms having the collapse ability. Yu says that it is probably his sister and asks Nao and Yusa to come with him and the rest of it goes as before. But after Nao walks out to leave, Yu comes out and decides to tell her everything and asks her if she would believe him if he told her that he came from the future. She says that she would and he becomes really happy and even thanks her for saving him in another future where he became depressed. He asks for her help in convincing others and the next day, they all decide to infiltrate Iyumi's school. Yu steals her powers that night to make sure it doesn't go berserk like the last time and then hides in the locker beside the rooftop door to protect her from Kanashi's attack. When the time comes, he walks up and scolds her and lets Nao take care of the blade and scares her away finally protecting his sister from getting ishikai to another world. When he does that, Midoki of this timeline gets a glimpse of his actions and decides to confront him with Kuma. Yu reassures them that he is indeed a time traveler by calling Kuma by his nickname Pu when they decide to go see Shunsu together. They sit down in the car and ride into the mountains to meet Shunsu the blind. Shunsu tells them that he brought them there because he thinks he was awakened his plunderer ability but Yu reveals that he has actually traveled back in time and tells them about everything. Shunsu believes him and says that he doesn't know how he managed to regain his memories back from another timeline, but it's certainly a rare and unexplained phenomenon. He then says that now Yu must stay at this research facility until his powers are gone and he asks why. Shunsu explains that Yu has the strongest ability in the world, and now he even has the ability to time leap and groups from all around the world are going to try to capture him so they can use him as a tool for world domination. With that in mind, he must stay here as it is the most protected facility in the entirety of Japan and then takes them all for a tour to the research labs. There he introduces them to Dr. Tsubsumiushi who turns out to be the same guy from Yu's future memories that saved him. Here in this facility, they are all working on developing a vaccine to cure people all around the world from this disease. Yu asks if they are sick, and he explains by asking them if they know about the long period comets. Ayumi says that she knows about them as it is her hobby and the doctor praises her, and then explains that there is a comet called Charlotte that passes by Earth every 75 years. When this comet passes by, it sprinkles a special dust in Earth's atmosphere, and whoever sniffs or ingests this dust gains supernatural powers dormant within their DNA at the time when their emotions are at their maximum, which is around teenage years. In the past, around 400 years ago, the comet passed by at an unusually low altitude, and that gave rise to a number of people gaining these powers. At the time, these people were called witches, and this brought about the mass witch hunts that continue to this day to some extent. He continues that they are working on developing a vaccine to prevent these powers from rising up in future generations. After hearing all of this, Yu agrees to stay there with Ayumi and Shunsuks, says that while they can't replace their old friends at the school, they are free to make friends with his group and introduce his childhood friends to them. 
They all take a liking to Ayumi and even make you feel at home by inviting to play games with him and everything, but then Kuma gets information about another ability user and Yu finds out that Kuma never had to drench himself and he only did it to hide his identity as per Shunsuke's suggestion. Yu asks him if he will be going back to the student council office and he says yes, but tells him that he can't come. After that, he walks out and gets into the car and tells the driver, Faruki, to take him to the school. Things start smelling fishy when Faruki misses the turn towards the school and keeps on driving straight towards an abandoned factory and reveals that he actually has a family. As per Shunsu's orders, they don't work with adults with families as they can be easily taken hostage and used against them. Being a former ability user, Faruki wanted to be of use to them and decided to hide the existence of his family from them. But this backfired when his family got taken as a hostage by some people from a foreign mafia group, and they demanded for him to keep quiet about it and to bring Kuma to them. Furuki apologies for this blunder and Kuma says that it's Oak and he should worry about his family. With that, they go to the factory and meet up with the foreigners who tells Furuki that they have one more task for him, and that is to bring you there. They blackmail him into doing it and send him off and then beat the broken teeth out of Kuma and injects him with truth serum to get all the secrets out of him. After that, they kidnap Nao and takes her as hostage as well and calls Shunsuk and tells him to send you to them alone or else they will kill all the hostages including Furuki's family. They all sit down and start brainstorming about plans to make things right but can't think of anything right. They think about you time leaping but that becomes a hard sell when they find out that Faruki's family was taken hostage as early as when they had just decided upon the idea to create this facility. There's no guarantee that things will turn out the same way this time as well. Shichino suggests that they send you alone and let him fight them and things look bad he can always use time leap. With that as their only option on hand, Shunsu tries to make Yu's mind up for this mission, but Yu starts panicking under all this pressure and says that he isn't confident in his ability to pull it off. He almost ends up using Collapse and killing them all under pressure, but Shunsu hugs him like the nice and he is and tells him to time leap to this exact moment if he ever feels like it's too much for him. With all this encouragement, Yu goes to meet the foreign mafia people and uses his ability on the two non-ability users to check them for any weapons. When they come out clean, he becomes surprised and gets attacked by a little girl assassin from behind. He tries to time leap, but the girl manages to cut his right eye and with one eye gone, he loses the ability to time leap at all. He decides to use Collapse instead, but the Mafia people say that if he uses it, he will kill the two hostages kept underground. He tries to fight back by using Telekinesis, but the assassin girl keeps stabbing him like a goblin and he ends up using Collapse and destroys everything. The only casualty includes Kumagami who dies protecting Nao. Shunsuk and the others arrive at the factory as well and Shunsuk falls on his knees and starts crawling to look for Kuma, and when he reaches near his impaled body and tells him to not die, Kuma says that he's sure Shunsuk made all that up on his own about his nickname being Poo and takes his last breath. Drop Poo in the comment section for poor Kumagami. The real give a chat of this story. Two days later, Yu wakes up at the hospital after his surgery. Shichino fills him in on the details and reveals that Nao was safe but Kuma couldn't make it. With this revelation, Yu becomes sad thinking about his brother and how he must be feeling the same way he felt when he lost a Yui, and thought that you won't be able to see her ever again. At first he goes into a shock and thinks that it's all his fault but then Shunsuk's friends tell him that it was a miscalculation on both sides and he isn't the one to blame. After that, a Yumi comes in and checks upon him and tries to cheer him up. With that, days pass by and everyone pays him a get well soon visit starting with Jojiro, Yuna, and the others. When Yuna comes by with some food, you ask Misa to come out and talk to her about afterlife and what lies beyond and by talking to him she realizes that she should cherish the few moments she has been granted thanks to Yusa's ability. Later on, during one of Yusa's visits back to her hometown to promote her parents' food ship, Misa comes out and pays her compliments to her parents and that ties a good knot to her story as well. Days continue to pass by and Yu slowly regains movement in all his limbs and starts recovering. He eventually goes out to see his brother and finds out just how depressed and down he looks. Despite that, he has a cool head on his shoulders and he tells him that soon other foreign mafia groups will be entering Japan and will be targeting them. Without a doubt, he feels depressed and sad about losing his best friend and Yu walks back to his room. There he finds Nao waiting for him and he talks to her about their current situation. She tells him of a bizarre idea that with his power he can hypothetically take away the powers of everyone from this world and make sure that no one can attack them. But this will mean that he will have to travel the whole world and possess thousands if not millions and billions of people and after all of that, there is no telling if he will even be able to keep his sanity at that point. He thinks about it for a while and soaks in just how brutal it would be but there is in fact a possibility for it to lead to a better future for all of them and he stands up and promises now to do it for her. 
He tells her that he loves her and explains how he developed these feelings over time after she helped him come out of his depression and she says that while it's all good for him, she must have done it only because she was feeling guilty or responsible herself. Besides that, she says that it is a crazy idea and he doesn't have to do it, but he says that it doesn't matter and he will do it for her so she falls in love with him and because he wants to create a better future for all of them as well. Hearing him, she tells him to make a promise and says that she will be waiting and if he manages to do it, she will definitely fall in love with him. To make things real, Nao tells him to start off by taking away her powers and he does it to show his resolve. With this decision made, Yu goes out to tell his brother about this crazy goal and how he has already started and then they all group up with the other members of Shunsuk's group and they tell him to go abroad and start dealing with the problem at large and leave Japan to them. With all things considered, Yu starts packing his bags and on the day of moving out, he receives a gift of a small translation booklet from Nao and says that he will keep his promise. His journey starts off in Singapore, where he finds a list of ability users by paying for it. From there, he goes to the Philippines to plunder the leader's powers, which turns out to be the ability to read minds. He uses this ability on him to find his ability seeker who is a kid named Angelo. From there, he goes and meets Angelo and seals his powers as well, which lets him see the location of ability users on the map. With that, he starts going wild and plunders the whole of the Philippines from ability users. Next up, he ends up in South Africa, where he takes down a lot of smaller groups with ability users in them. He soon earns himself the nickname of the One-Eyed Grim Reaper throughout the world and gets a bounty on his head. He next heads to Egypt, where he gets the ability to tell what ability he stole. With that, he starts checking off one country after the other and gathers a huge number of powers including ones that lets him translate things in his head, one that makes it so he doesn't need to sleep and one that lets him worsen existing diseases. In the mountains of Afghanistan, he locates a new group of people on his map that appear to be children who are yet to develop their abilities. He tracks them down and uses his disease growth ability to make their abilities manifest early on so he can steal them. He then makes round trips to other countries he has been to as well to make sure that no one is left with the potential to develop new abilities. In India, he has his first encounter with the anti-Grim Reaper force who attack him with guns on sight, but he defeats them all with their force field ability and takes all their abilities as well. He then heads to Peru and finds a girl using her healing ability to help others, but regretfully steals it as well and wonders if he should time leap and save Kuma, but then decides against it with the excuse that he shouldn't defy the laws of nature more than he already has. In Cuba, he starts feeling the first symptoms of a large number of abilities coexisting within him. He accidentally uses collapse and destroys a building and uses telekinesis to almost kill an innocent man, but then takes control over himself in time. Eventually, he ends up in Saudi Arabia and forcefully tries to go to sleep to get a little break, but when he wakes up, he finds himself in a new place and his memory is fuzzy. He looks at the news and realizes that in his sleep, he caused massive destruction by going on an automating berserk mode to hunt down ability users. He decides to never sleep again and continues his mission. He then goes to Italy where he sits down on a chair while being attacked by a bunch of mafia members shooting at him with guns as he wonders what he is doing there and why he is even traveling the world. He starts losing his purpose but then gets a glimpse of it back by looking at the little translation booklet that Nao gave him. He tries to remember her face and who she was but it has been far too long for him to even remember that clearly. In the end, he settles for making himself believe that it must be someone important to him and continues with his mission and starts wiping countries after countries from their ability users. After one whole year of a brutal journey around the world, fighting against countless groups of terrorists and stealing a seemingly infinite number of abilities, he loses his sense of self many times on this journey, but his feelings for Nao always brings him back to his mission. Finally, the day comes when he robs the last person on Earth of their supernatural ability which gives them courage. As he falls on the ground having fulfilled his promise, Shun Tzu flies in to retrieve him and takes him back home. When he wakes up in the hospital bed with Nao beside her, he asks her who she was and she realizes that he has forgotten about her fully. After amassing so many powers and going through so many harsh experiences, he has forgotten who he was but she decides to keep her end of the promise and tells him that she is his girlfriend and tells him of their time together in the student council. She tells him that she is the one who created that booklet for him, and he tells her that throughout his journey, he had kept it with him as a good luck charm. She thanks him for fulfilling his promise and coming back safely, and takes him out to meet their friends. It might not be the happiest ending in the world, but with everyone at peace and a bright future ahead of them, the story of Charlotte comes to an end.